Normal evacuation and bowel control are the result of intricate communication within the entire colon, pelvic floor and anorectal muscles, the sacral nerves, and the brain. Fecal continence depends on complex interactions between anal sphincter function, anorectal sensibility, puborectalis muscle activity, colorectal motility, stool consistency, rectal wall properties, and peripheral and central innervation. The sacral nerves modulate the evacuation reflex, both through inhibition and stimulation. These nerves transmit information via afferent or sensory pathways and efferent or motor pathways. These complex neural reflex mechanisms rely on sensations coupled with involuntary or autonomic and voluntary or somatic activity. As the rectal wall distends with feces, the sensation is communicated along afferent nerve fibers to the spinal cord and brain via sympathetic and parasympathetic pathways. The parasympathetic fibers, which contain both efferent and afferent fibers to the lower or distal colon, stimulate motility and cause strong contractions of the rectum, while sympathetic fibers inhibit motility. The evacuation reflex initiates efferent action potentials. This causes the internal anal sphincter to relax, allowing movement of contents. The external anal sphincter and the pelvic floor muscles are voluntary striated muscles that help postpone defecation. When these muscles relax, feces are expelled. If the pelvic floor fails to relax, incomplete or ineffective evacuation can occur. The external and internal anal sphincters, pelvic floor, rectum, and anal canal are all innervated by the sacral nerves. These nerves regulate the sensation, reflex activity, contraction, and relaxation of the rectal and anal sphincter muscles. Given the complex physiology of normal evacuation, fecal incontinence can be the result of a spectrum of causes. Commonly an acquired disorder, FI could be due to structural causes such as trauma or be of idiopathic or neuropathic origin. Rather than a muscular or structural disorder, one underlying factor may be abnormal nerve activity. This abnormal nerve activity may affect the smooth and striated muscles used for bowel control. Traditional initial management of fecal incontinence includes pads, bulking agents, biofeedback, pelvic floor exercises, dietary changes or surgery, particularly to the anal canal or sphincters. While these approaches may alleviate fecal incontinence for some, they are not effective for everyone and may not address the causes of FI. Sacral nerve stimulation with interstim therapy may be an effective treatment for patients with fecal incontinence. Interstim therapy provides neurostimulation to modulate the communication among the pelvic floor, anal sphincters, colon, and the brain through the sacral nerves. Interstim therapy involves a minimally invasive procedure, placing a lead or thin wire near the S3 or S4 nerve root. This lead is connected to a neurostimulator that is usually implanted in the buttock. The third and fourth sacral nerves are mixed nerves containing voluntary somatic, sensory, and autonomic motor nerves, both afferent and efferent, any or all of which may contribute to the clinical effect of sacral nerve stimulation. Although the precise mechanism of action for sacral nerve stimulation remains unclear at this time, substantial evidence from clinical studies, including randomized controlled trials, demonstrate that interstim therapy greatly improves continence and quality of life. One potential mechanism of action for sacral nerve stimulation involves a neuromodulation effect on the pre-existing activity in sensory fiber pathways that control muscular function. The result may be the activation or inhibition of adjacent neurons which alter the dysfunctional neural reflexes of the pelvic structures. This may explain why sacral nerve stimulation is associated with a moderate increase in the external anal sphincter squeeze pressure and improvement in motility. Another theory involves neuromodulation of all the nerve fibers within the sacral plexus, including somatic fibers to the external anal sphincter and pelvic floor, autonomic fibers to the internal anal sphincter and distal colon, and afferent sensory fibers from the anus and rectum. During sacral nerve stimulation studies, some patients appeared to re-establish an awareness of their pelvic floor muscle. 
In several cases, this allowed them to consciously relax and contract their muscles. The renewed sensory function may have helped to improve the voluntary aspect of continence. In other research, anorectal physiologic measurements suggest that interstim therapy is not limited to the striated muscles or sphincters, but also modulates the sensory afferent pathways. Benefits of neuromodulation were observed at levels of stimulation that did not activate striated muscle. As noted, extensive evidence shows sacral nerve stimulation with interstim therapy is safe and effective, offering patients improved continence and quality of life. In addition, interstim therapy is the only bowel control treatment option available that includes a test to determine probable success prior to implant. Future research will deepen our understanding of the mechanism of action and help enhance clinical outcomes for patients with fecal incontinence.